мистър Бен Ритър. Аплодисменти за Бен Ритър. Мистър Ритър е специален гост във второто събитие след легендата Хари Бенсън. След второто на второто събитие от кампанията Майстори на фотографията, което е организирано от фундация Мусис, фундация Америка за България и Viva.com Art Hall. Мусис всъщност е фундацията, ако някой от вас все още не знае, на артистите Иван Мудов и Гергана Мудова. Вдъхновена е тази фундация от акцията, мистификация на Иван Мудов преди време за музей за съвременно изкуство. Той провокира цялата културна общност в страната, като покани всички на откриването на Музей за съвременно изкуство, на гарата в Подуене и там нямаше никой, освен хората. Но ето, че той продължи да действа и Мусис сега вече за втори път кани световна звезда в България, за да говорим за съвременно изкуство и фотография. Преди да дискутираме по въпросите които споменахме. Ще дам думата на господин Бен Ритър, който ще направи презентация, лекция на тема взаимодействие на фотографията с рекламата и медиите. A few months ago that I would have such a special place in my heart for Sofia, Bulgaria, I would say, I don't know what you're talking about, but here I am and this is amazing, so thanks again. Um, what I hope to do is take some of the mystery away from what it takes to actually have a career in photography. I started out with no work and uh, no jobs and no contacts and I made my way because I looked for it and I wanted it. Um, um, so I can basically start from the beginning. A lot of people have asked about where I got my start in a lot of the interviews this week. So this is me as a teenager at 15 years old. I was in punk bands in New Jersey. I had long hair. I liked art. I didn't care about school. I, you know, I, I was just a pretty normal, weird teenager is what you could basically say. Um, but I was, I was really into art. I wasn't good at painting or drawing. And a teacher politely suggested that I try photography. And um, that opened up a, lot, up a lot of doors for me artistically and uh, just for the rest of my life. I use it as a tool to have access or have opportunities. So you can see the black and white side is actually photos I took when I was 15 years old um, that started to just get me a little, you know, a little attention just from friends, family, parents, uh, teachers, you know, people that maybe weren't noticing uh, any particular potential except for me being a good, clever kid. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just being a teenager. And uh, I ultimately ended up pursuing photography in college. So to the other side are my color photos I started taking uh, at a university level. And I... You know, you're not supposed to have a style yet when you're in college. You're supposed to be taking a lot of photos and discovering what it is that you know, you're attracted to and maybe getting a good technical grasp on the, the medium. Um, and also what I learned in college was that I just, it was something I wanted to do every day. I would wake up every day and go to my classes and then I would work on my own personal time and I would sit at my computer and, you know, back then it wasn't um, so digital yet. This was all film, of course, but I would just spend so much time with it that it was clear it was something I could pursue and take seriously. Um, so because the education was so art-driven, I felt like I wasn't going to have a career selling art prints, and I don't. I, it's not something I do. I have always been more interested in how I can have a job being a photographer. So uh, I, I figured at the time maybe it would be more of a photojournalism angle or um, perhaps I'd be a graphic designer, perhaps I'd be a photo editor. I just I would, knew I would be involved in some way. It's hard, to, it's hard to be that age and say, I will be a photographer because you have to learn how to make money doing it. It's, it's literally, a, a, it's, that's a science more than an art. So um, because in school I wasn't feeling fulfilled with my 
potential as a working person, I started to pursue internships on my own, um, and I was able to get college credit for shooting for local newspapers. Uh, they needed young people to just go do restaurant reviews, shoot local artists, uh, or cover little news events. It, it, you know, this is, uh, it's not mind-blowing work. I'm not sitting here saying, look how amazing I was in college. I wasn't, I was learning. I was learning how to take assignments, and uh, when digital photography started to become popular around 2002, uh, I invested in my first DSLR camera. I got a Canon 10D, and my parents did help me buy it, and thanks, Mom and Dad, it was a good investment. Um, it, was a, it's, they, the, it wasn't good for art, because it didn't have a lot of megapixels back then, but it was perfect for uh, this kind of quick turnaround uh, journalism. It, you know, some, it, it was... Uh, it was changing the way things were looking because people were just quickly becoming better at photography. You had more chances to get your image right. And uh, I'm talking a lot about this, but it's relevant because, um, actually I'm gonna talk about the Phoenix for another minute. Because this, I jump way ahead right here. This was in 2002, I'm shooting for these newspapers in Boston. 10 years later, because of social media, my editor had never left her desk and hired me to shoot Chloe Sevigny, the famous actress in New York City for the cover of that very newspaper. So it was one of those moments where, you know, I felt like, not that I had made it, but I felt like all that work over those 10 years clearly was paying off because in Boston when I was in school, I was admiring the people that were shooting the covers. And then there I was 10 years later in that grown up career position getting to do it. Ако имате нужда от превод, събравих да ви кажа, моля да ме извините, има слушалки някъде там. Който иска и който има нужда, ето там е Гати, която ще ви даде слушалките. Благодаря ви, извинявайте. Should I speak in Bulgarian? I didn't realize this. Everyone's cool? Okay. Um, so, in college, I'm going to wrap up that because that's honestly, that is just all precursor to what I'm really up to now, or what I've been up to as a professional in New York. Um, I will say about college, they had put such an emphasis on printing photos in the darkroom and critiques that I wasn't out there shooting a lot. I was missing so many opportunities to be a photographer with a camera and making art. I mean, I have my personal work in this show. Those are accidental photos. Those, I was just, because I was available to be present in that moment and take those photos, they happened. And I've taken hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of snapshots. And you know, there's only nine that would be on this wall, but those are really important to me. And I'm gonna get to that too. Um, after college, I was still not a professional photographer making a living as a professional independent photographer, but I was career driven and I was inspired by my work at the Boston Phoenix, and I had moved back to New York City, where I'm, uh, cl that's closer to home for me anyway, and I got a job at a magazine called House and Garden, and I could care less about houses or gardens. Um, I was hired to be an assistant to the creative director of an art department, and this magazine was a very established corporate magazine, and it was in a publishing house, or, uh, I say was because it doesn't exist, the magazine has since folded, but it, it was at Condé Nast Publications, who's responsible for Vogue and GQ and Vanity Fair, so you can see why I wanted to be in that environment. Um, there was potential to move up and have a career as an editor, but there was also uh, access to creative directors who I could annoy constantly and make them look at my ambitious uh, personal work, and maybe maybe they'd give me an opportunity. Uh, at House and Garden, I was told upon being hired that you know you're not being hired to be a photographer. We have the best photographers in the world shooting for us. I said, of course, of course. I just want to learn. I just want to learn, and I learned how. I learned by looking, and what I was seeing was that the people whose work was getting published was much much better than mine. 
And when you're in the real world, it's not an academic environment where you have teachers who are basically being paid by you to talk about your work. They're not, they're not gonna really put you down uh, or not hard enough anyway. And so it's, it's almost too supportive because in New York, it's either literally your work's good, I'm gonna hire you or get lost. So I started at House and Garden. A lot of these are uh, some of the, I was there for two years. These weren't the first things I did. What I learned there was how to shoot products on a white backdrop because they needed a lot of that. Uh, what was going on at the time, this is in 2004, is professionals were still only shooting on film, uh, big slide transparencies, big, big large format film. And I had this uh, DSLR camera, at the, I had a, the next one up from the one I had in college at this point, because I kept investing. And I would, want, the savvier editors said, hey, go shoot this uh, blender for us. And I would go into the photocopy room, set up a white backdrop, take photos of the blender, quickly do the retouching, and then they had a publishable, ready-to-go image. And they were completely blown away because all these editors had been in the industry for 30 years. They are only hiring the top photographers. They're overpaying for services. Um, and here I am undercutting and undermining an entire industry by being available and being savvy enough to say, hey, why don't you let me try it? Just let me try. Um, these products are not from House and Garden. I still shoot products on my own time. We're talking about money now, people. In my own time, in my apartment, Estee Lauder hires me to shoot collections for them all the time. Um, it pays really well because they need someone who can do it efficiently and who doesn't make a big production out of it. So I can do this work on my own time, which is important, uh, nights, weekends, or a free day, and I can pay my rent with it and maybe more. It depends on the month. And it's, it's a great secret about being a photographer that you can do more than what you're showing. Um, you show work on your website and your portfolios to get the kind of work you want to get, but there's so much more work you can do and that's going to keep coming up. So at House and Garden, it started with a blender in a closet and then they started giving me portrait assignments, sending me out, renting studios for me, and then ultimately um, I left there and went freelance and I'll explain why. Uh, I talked about my personal work a little, um, and this is what I would do on my nights and weekends in New York. Um, up until very recently, some of these photos are. It's, uh, people are fun, and you can have fun with a camera with them. People would like to perform for cameras, and um, you never know what you're going to get when you're out there. Uh, my personal work, though, is important, so just absorb a, for a second. Uh, what I was missing from my portfolio, because at the time now, I'm doing this high-end work for House and Garden, and this work on my own, but it, there's, it just doesn't cross over at all. I'd have no identity as a photographer commercially. Um, so I'm either going to get hired to do kind of like lame, boring portrait work, or I'm going to take my pictures for free and show them. Um, so I started to make my own personal portfolio of portrait work that at the time I felt like it could compete with uh, higher end, more established working fashion and portrait photographers in New York. What's fun about this is all these wallpapers in the background, I actually would steal from House and Garden from the uh, prop closet and make backdrops in my tiny uh, shared apartment in uh, the East Village of New York. But I had, you know, at this point I'd had my camera and I was playing with lighting and um, I, I, took some, I took some strong images. I still, you know, the, the one in the top middle, that's actually Keith Richards' daughter, uh, Alexandra Richards. So it, it's also, when you're in the city environment, you have access to people that you, you know, might, might maybe get you a little more attention or, uh, or they're just so gorgeous that they're just great to photograph. And it's all about getting attention. So I would post this work at the time to MySpace um, and and, and at the time, MySpace was, a, a, are people familiar? It's like before Facebook. Um, it was a pretty lame social network, but all these people would start using the photos I would take of them as their uh, main profile pictures. And a friend who was working at MTV actually saw this and said, oh, that looks like what we do at MTV. I'm gonna show the photo editor. Uh, so she did. And a week later, he called me and I was hired to shoot Beck uh, when I was 20, 
24, 25, 25 years old, and this is in 2006. Um, and I'm still at House and Garden Magazine. So I used my sick days to go shoot people like Beck and Fergie. Um, and I would take other side moon, like work moonlighting as, you know, and I, I knew how to shoot interiors because of House and Garden. I'd go shoot an interior for someone. But I was making money now. I was getting paid to be a photographer. And even House and Garden was paying me to publish my images. So I'm finding uh, revenue by just by beyond my salaried position, which trust me was like barely anything. And, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm being hired by people and I'm doing strong work. And the MTV stuff was enough of a kick for me to actually go freelance at that point. So in 2007, I went off on my own. I've been working for myself ever since. Um, and for two years, I did uh, studio portrait work for MTV, anything from a uh, like punk rock band to iconic uh, people like Rufus Wainwright's up there, Perry Farrell you've seen in the show, Fergie, uh, some rappers. That one's Chameleon Air. I'm not sure if he made it out here ever. Um, also, though, I'm not, I'm not the strongest studio photographer yet. MTV needed young photographers to shoot for their dot-com site. Um, this is before YouTube was even really big yet. So it was all about having photo slideshows on the internet. And MTV would basically take advantage of artists coming in and have a young photographer who could work for lower than very standard rates shoot very big celebrities. So I'm just getting this opportunity to have access to people that now PR people are way savvier and probably wouldn't let this happen um, ever. Because all of a sudden all these images are getting out of their artists because MTV's just, oh yeah, photo shoot, no big deal. And then all of a sudden they're like, back for MTV. Um, it was a... Uh, it was a good, and also having the famous faces in my book, it was a way for me to reach out to people in the industry um, and get meetings because people wanted to know who this young person was who was actually getting access to studio lighting and celebrities. Um, I can get more into that if, if, if I come back around to it, but this is probably more fun to see all these horrible photos I took of Fergie. Um, the, the, the thing is, because I wasn't a strong studio photographer yet and because I was nervous and didn't want to um, be basically bossing around a big star like this on my second big celebrity shoot ever, I let her run around like a maniac, posing everywhere, um, not standing in the right light. And so there's a lesson that I learned about lighting for a set and uh, maybe making it so that anywhere that someone like Fergie ran around to, the light would hold up. You know, you, you learn just little lessons every time you shoot. Oh, I should have done this. Um, the good news is I was able to keep a few, and MTV continued to hire me after that. Um, I, didn't, I didn't show them a lot of these. It's 